right, students, welcome back to another programming session with Pascal. All right, so I told you that we're going to do some actual coding, but in order to do the actual coding, you need to learn some basics. All right, the program that you're seeing, to, seeing in front of you right now is just a simple input, output, and processing. So basically, just like in pseudocode, where you have input statements, output statements, processing statements, we're now transferring what we have learned in pseudocode into Pascal. With programming in Pascal, we have a head and we also have a body. In the head, we detailed our title of the program how we access the Pascal library in order to run the program, as well as declare our variables with their data types. Now, just like in access where we had text, numbers, currencies, and attachments using um, access database, we have something similar. But what we predominantly are going to use in Pascal is string char integer and real string and char deals with text integer and real deals with numbers the only difference is that looking at string is going to deal with multiple characters char is going to deal with a single character so if you want to type in just a letter use char if you want to type in a word, we use the data type string. The same thing can be said similarly with real and integer. Integer only deals with positive or negative whole numbers, while real deals with decimal numbers. Okay? Integer, positive or negative whole numbers, real, decimal numbers. So these are the data types that you will be predominantly using. Now, what we have here are variables. Now, we don't have to say they're the actual data that we're entering, but they're just representations or storage areas, which only can hold one data bit at a time. So like name, if you're going to enter a person's name, like John or Mary, that would be stored in name. The same thing can be said if you're going to store a number like one, two, eight, seven. It can be stored in num one, and similar can be stored in num two. Average is going to be real, and this is where you know that most of the time that average is going to be in decimal form. And letter, as you can see, is just representing the character itself. Oh, please note that when you're coding if you're going to use two or more words or a word and a number, you only can use a underscore to make it one or combine it together. But I'll show you this later on. So this is our head. In our body, this is where the actual code is going to be executed. You can easily identify the body between begin and end, the end with a full stop. Later on, you're going to see other pieces of code with ends, but it's going to have a semicolon at the end of it. Don't worry, we'll get to that soon. So what I've done in this body is to illustrate the different types of data being entered. So I'm going to use name for multiple characters, integer for whole numbers for num1 and num2, real to represent our average here, decimal numbers, and letter, which is going to represent as char. So, so just like in our pseudocode, we have output statements, we have input statements, and we also have processing statements. So when you want to prompt a user or a person to enter data, we need to display some information on the screen in order to prompt them to enter that data. So each output statement is identified by the word re write line or write ln. 
ln in this case is just a short shortening of line. To input, we use a keyword read line, okay, or read ln. All right. To generate a space, we can just use write line and then end it off with a semicolon. You will notice that each line is terminated by a semicolon. Okay. So you will see how this program will actually work. Now, for the average, we always start off with the store's location and then we end it with the expression. Oh, I kind of made a mistake right here. I have num1 plus num2. I haven't divided it by 2 as yet. Just a slight modification. We'll be fine. All right. So that's better. All right. Now then, below you see another right line. And this right line is displaying what will be end result of this calculation so whatever is calculated here in num1 plus num2 divided by 2 will be stored in avg and that avg will display that result here all right this is only what will be shown on the screen this part right here so you're not going to see any modification done to this only this one you're going to see the modification being done all right so I'm going to run the program. Now, to run the program, we need to compile first so we can make sure that there are no errors. To compile, you will see this is a green tick right here to compile that project or the program. I'm going to compile it now. And as you can see, if you see that the total errors is zero, then you're okay. If there's an error, you'll be easily identified based on the information located below. It will give you that indication whether that error is going to be within the specific line, above the line, or below the line. All right. Uh, I guess I made another mistake. Um, it's seen right here that local variable letter is not used. All right, I'll just make a slight modification as I go along. All right, so. I'm going to change this aspect to letter. Uh, change the variable name, name to letter. All right. And then compile it. Each time you make modifications to the program, you need to compile it. Okay. If you don't, it's going to run the same old code that you had previously modified. All right. Since we have no errors, I'm going to execute the, pro the program. All right, um, bear in mind, if you're using Avas, it's going to do a check. All right, this might take a few seconds. It will go off and then the program will appear again. All right, that's one and now it's back. Okay, so come across. All right, so we can see the actual program being laid out. So we see the output statement right line right here and then what we want it to be outputted is now displayed here. In this case, we are going to enter a letter. So I'll just enter the letter Z. Okay. So you can see how the information is going to be displayed. So you can see this line here is easily identified here followed by the letter right here. And you notice that with the right line semicolon, it has generated a space as required. So the next line of code is enter a name. I'm going to enter the name John. Okay. And you can see the same replication is done here. So the last line of code is enter two, two numbers. So I'm going to enter two and 30. All right. And then hit enter. And then below, I get average. You will notice that the processing statement is not displayed because I have not written a right line for it. Only just to do the necessary calculation. What, what was calculated here, in this processing statement is now displayed here. So we see the average equals, and then you see 16. Now you're probably wondering why do I have AVG colon zero colon one 
this is basically putting the the decimal to one decimal placing all right so if you want it to have two decimal places then we change it from one to two if you want it to three you can put three right here or if you don't want no decimal places then you can put this one to zero now there's a reason why I did this is because sometimes the computer is unable to distinguish the actual number to be displayed from a standard format or expression so this is why I put the decimal placing right here all right now the right read line or read ln the cursor you see is just things right here until I press enter when I press enter the program is now terminated all right so this is just a basic layout of how you be coding all right in the next video we will do some actual coding